Hey y'all. Good. So you're just shifting from book study to evening prayer. So I gotta shuffle my books around here a little bit. Thank you, by the way, for sharing. That is fabulous. Get folks uh, knowing what's going on. Hey, Shannon. And I apologize. I like to say hello to everybody, but not everybody's name pops up on my screen. So I say hello to the folks whose names pop up, uh, but that doesn't mean that I like them more than I like you. Uh, it's just that I'm going with the names that I get. But uh, I'm delighted to see all of you. Hey, Kathy. I'm going to try one thing before we get started here. It's a little, the screen's a little dark. Let me get some light on that. I will be right back. All right, let's see if that helps at all with the light issue here. Oh, right, otherwise I just look like a dark blob on the screen, not so helpful. Let's see, okay, so that looks like it's helping a bit. Hey, William, Father Manny, good to see you. Rev, good to see you. Good to see you all. Yeah. All right, if you haven't uh, and you're able, go ahead and hit the share button down at the bottom. Let folks know what's going on. Give your friends a little bit of peace in the evening as well at the end of a busy day. Shannon, thanks. That is helpful to see that. Probably just too much light behind me is the problem. Still learning. All right. Well, tonight uh, we begin on page 109, an order of worship for the evening. Sue, good to see you. Jenny Fox. All right, page 109. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one lights a lamp to put it under a bucket. 
but on a lampstand where it gives light for everyone in the house. And you, like the lamp, must shed light among your fellow men, so that they may see the good you do and give glory to your Father in heaven. Let us pray. Eternal God, who led your ancient people into freedom by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, grant that we who walk in the light of your presence may rejoice in the liberty of the children of God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Then on page 112 is the Fos Hilaron. Please pray through that with me. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. Our psalms for this evening are Psalms 12 through 14. Those begin on page 597. Psalms 12 through 14, page 597. When you get there, let's read through those together. Psalms 12, 13, and 14. Let's read through those together. Help me, Lord, for there is no godly one left. The faithful have vanished from among us. Everyone speaks falsely with his neighbor. With a smooth tongue they speak from a double heart. Oh, that the Lord would cut off all smooth tongues and close the lips that utter proud boasts. Those who say, with our tongue will we prevail, our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? Because the needy are oppressed, and the poor cry out in misery, I will rise up, says the Lord, and give them the help they long for. The words of the Lord are pure words, like silver refined from ore, and purified seven times in the fire. O Lord, watch over us, and save us from this generation forever. The wicked prowl on every side, and that which is worthless is highly prized by everyone. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long shall I have perplexity in my mind and grief in my heart day after day? How long shall my enemy triumph over me? Look upon me and answer me, O Lord my God. Give light to my eyes, lest I sleep in death. Lest my enemies say, I have prevailed over him, and my foes rejoice that I have fallen. But I put my trust in your mercy. My heart is joyful because of your saving help. I will sing to the Lord, for he has dealt with me richly. I will praise the name of the Lord Most High. The fool has said in his heart, There is no God. All are corrupt and commit abominable acts, and there is none who does any good. The Lord looks down from heaven upon us all to see if there is any who is wise. If there is one who seeks after God, everyone has proved faithless, all alike have turned bad. There is none who does good, no, not one. Have they no knowledge, all those evildoers, who eat up my people like bread and do not call upon the Lord? See how they tremble with fear, because God is in the company of the righteous. Their aim is to confound the plans of the afflicted, but the Lord is their refuge. Oh, that Israel's deliverance would come out of Zion. When the Lord restores the fortunes of his people, Jacob will rejoice and Israel be glad. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. And tonight's second scripture reading, we continue the Exodus story, the ancient Hebrew people heading across the desert to the Promised Land. This is Exodus 15, uh, starting with uh, verse 22. Then Moses ordered Israel to set out from the Red Sea, and they went into the wilderness of Shur. They went three days in the wilderness and found no water. When they came to Marah, they could not drink the water because it was bitter, 
That is why it was called Mara. And the people complained against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? He cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a piece of wood. He threw it into the water, and the water became sweet. There the Lord made for them a statute and an ordinance, and there he put them to the test. He said, If you will listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God, and do what is right in his sight, and give heed to his commandments and to all his statutes, I will not bring upon you any of the diseases that I brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Then they came to Elim, where there were twelve springs of water and seventy palm trees, and they camped there by the water. The whole congregation of Israelites set out from Elim, and Israel came to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elim and Sinai, on the fifteenth day of the second month after they had departed from the land of Egypt. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt. We sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. If you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. And the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you. And each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them whether they will follow my instructions or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on other days. So Moses and Aaron said to the Israelites, In the evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, and in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your complaining against the Lord. What are we that you complain against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening, and your fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard the complaining that you utter against him, what are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. As Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The word of the Lord. So a lot of times in ancient scripture, well, in scripture in general, uh, the proper names of things are important. The proper names of people often mean something, and the proper names of places mean something, too. Because you have to remember that in uh, biblical culture, whether it was the ancient Hebrews or it was the Greek culture of the New Testament, most people were illiterate, and Scripture was read to them. They didn't sit and read it like we do. And so it had multiple meanings. On the one hand, uh, you were supposed to hear the story and understand the story and take in the story. Oh, God did this for our ancestors. Oh, God acts. God's mighty and powerful. Things like that. But there's also an entertainment value to it, because if you're going to sit and, and listen to something for a long period of time, the story needs to be well told, right? And the story needs to reinforce the point. And so when we started this particular uh, reading tonight, and the people were heading out, they came to a place called Mara, where they could not drink the water because it was bitter. Well, Mara is, a, is an ancient Hebrew word that literally means bitter. So, when you go to Mara, you know, you're not going to be able to drink the water because it's bitter. Exactly. And sometimes in Scripture, what we'll find is that the hero of a story has a name like God saves, or God is mighty, something like that. And it's foreshadowing. Not only did the person have that name, but... Huh, God's going to do something mighty because the hero or the heroine of the story is named God is mighty. So the proper names often mean something important. All right, our canticle tonight is on page 88. It is canticle number 12. When you get there, let's read through that together. And canticle 12 is the one that has multiple parts to it. We're just going to read uh, part 2. When you get there, it'll make more sense. Page 88, Canticle 12. So, for Canticle 12, we will read the Invocation, that's on page 88. We'll read Part 2, that's on page 89. And then we'll read the Doxology on page 90. All right. Let us read together. Glorify the Lord, all you works of the Lord. Praise Him and highly exalt Him forever. In the firmament of His power, glorify the Lord. Praise Him and highly exalt Him forever. Let the earth glorify the Lord. Praise Him and highly exalt Him forever. 
Glorify the Lord, O mountains and hills, and all that grows upon the earth. Praise Him and highly exalt Him forever. Glorify the Lord, O springs of water, seas and streams, O whales and all that move in the waters. All the birds of the air glorify the Lord. Praise Him and highly exalt Him forever. Glorify the Lord, O beasts of the wild, and all you flocks and herds. O men and women everywhere, glorify the Lord. Praise Him and highly exalt Him forever. Let us glorify the Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Praise Him and highly exalt Him forever. In the firmament of His power, glorify the Lord. Praise Him and highly exalt Him forever. And then we continue on page 120 with the Apostles' Creed. When you get there, please join me in reading that together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And we continue with Suffrages A. Please pray with me. Show us your mercy, O Lord. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. Let your way be known upon earth. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Create in us clean hearts, O God. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal Mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Here is a prayer that one of you wrote. Our Father, thank you for being with us during a very trying time. Please continue to bless us as we transition to post-pandemic. We will need to look with different eyes at a world we have not seen before. Clinging to the pre-COVID world will be easy for us, especially in church. Help us to hang with you and love each other as we move into a healthy way of worship. You will still be our God and we your people. Amen. And if you will, turn with me to page 815, and we'll pray prayer 3 together for the human family. Page 815, prayer 3. Let us pray. O God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your Son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infects our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. 
Unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth, that in your good time all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, you manifest in your servants the signs of your presence. Send forth upon us the spirit of love, that in companionship with one another your abounding grace may increase among us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, I invite your thanksgivings and intercessions, silently or aloud. Thank you, Father, for each person gathered here and for our time together. We lift up the joys and concerns on everyone's heart, asking your healing, your peace, uh, and your protection for those who are doing well. Please may we rest well tonight and we refreshed for your service in the morning. Amen. Page 113 is our final prayer. Uh, there's a prayer that begins, Almighty, Everlasting God. It's at the bottom of the page, so please turn to 113 with me, and we'll pray that together. Let us pray. Almighty, Everlasting God, let our prayer in your sight be as incense, the lifting up of our hands as the evening sacrifice. Give us grace to behold you, present in your word and sacraments, and to recognize you in the lives of those around us. Stir up in us the flame of that love which burned in the heart of your Son as he bore his passion, and let it burn in us to eternal life and to the ages of ages. Amen. And then on the next page. My friends, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Good to see you, friends. Deacon Sue's got you going at 8 o'clock tonight in just an hour with some Compline that will, that will calm you down and give you a peaceful evening. And let's see, tomorrow, 6.30, Julia Tyson's got you covered for evening prayer. Let's see, Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. One thing I want to note about Sunday is that we will be running two services at the same time. Uh, of course, there will be in-person church worship at 9.30. Uh, there will also be online uh, morning prayer at 9.30 on, on this Facebook channel. Uh, Deacon Sue will have that covered, or where we normally have it, yeah. So Deacon Sue will be leading morning prayer. If you're still needing to stay at home, uh, if you want to be at church, there'll be live worship there at 930. So two options for you. Hope you have a blessed evening, friends.